There we go. Hello. We're continuing to read our way through Lost Christianities. And we're reading about, let's see if I can get the author's name in there. There we go. About the Gnostics. It's by Ehrman. And <clears throat> I want to read about the Gnostics because I find them the most interesting of Christian groups, at least during these times. So let's get into it. What would happen to an apocalyptic worldview if contrary to expectation, the end did not come soon? Or worse, if it never came at all? What would people firmly committed to an apocalyptic view of the world do then? How would their thinking change? Some such people might well experience another radical modification in their thinking, at least as radical as that from the prophetic view. God is causing suffering. To the apocalyptic, God's enemy, the devil, is causing suffering. Both of these earlier views presuppose that the world was created by God, who is the good and all-powerful divine force behind it. But if these views are called into question by the ongoing realities of suffering in the world, what then? Maybe, in fact, the entire assumption is wrong. Maybe this world is not the creation of the one true God. Maybe the suffering in this world is not happening as a punishment from this good God or despite his goodness. Maybe the God of this world is not good. Maybe he is causing suffering not because he is good and wants people to share in his goodness, but because he is evil or ignorant or inferior and he wants people to suffer or doesn't care if they do, or maybe he can't do anything about it. But if that's true, then the God of this world is not the one true God. There must be a greater God above this world, one who did not create this world. In this understanding, the material world itself, material existence in all forms, is inferior to the best or evil at the worst. Inferior at the best or evil at the worst. And so is the God then who created it. There must be a non-material God unconnected to this world above the creator God and the Old Testament, a God who neither created this world nor brought suffering to it, who wants to relieve his people from their suffering, not by redeeming this world, but by delivering them from it, liberating them from their entrapment in this material existence. Very important. That is a Gnostic view. It may well have derived ultimately from a kind of failed apocalypticism. No wonder then that it is so taken up with Jewish texts. It derives from a Jewish worldview, and no wonder that, and, uh, and no wonder that <clears throat> in its Christian forms it gives such a central role to Christ, reinterpreting him away from his own apocalyptic roots. It will be a mistake, however, to see Gnosticism as failed apocalypticism, pure and simple. For there are other factors that appear to have affected the complicated mix that we find in the Gnostic religions. Here I will mention just one, one other. One of the most striking features of Gnosticism is its radical dualism in which the material world is evil and the world of the spirit is good. Where did this idea come from? Some readers are immediately struck by the parallels to certain kinds of Eastern religion and there may be something to that connection. But scholars of antiquity are usually stuck even more by, or struck, excuse me, even more by the similarities to other philosophical notions known from the period, especially among thinkers who stood within the Platonic tradition. Plato, too, had emphasized a kind of dualism of shadow and reality, matter and spirit. And there were a number of philosophers from the first and second centuries of the common era who expanded Plato's views and developed entire cosmologies, explanations for our world that were dependent on him. These thinkers are usually called middle Platonists. The differentiate, to differentiate them from the older Platonists immediately following Plato, who died in the fourth century BCE, and the even better known Neoplatonists of the third and following centuries CE. So 
we'll stop there and um, as you can see this is a very interesting the Gnostics are very popular very popular today for one thing it, it gives us um, it fulfills our desire to learn and know because we really want to study. I know some people say, oh, I hate studying, I hate reading. No, you don't really. What you hate is what the school system has turned it into. They've made studying and reading drudgery. But when you're studying and reading for discovery and to expand yourself, you love it. And naturally you want to expand yourself. That's why I say, I don't understand why people want schools to open back up because they're really not good places, not for our time, and never really were. They um, reduce you instead of expand you. So um, I hope they never open again and we just keep studying the way we want to expand ourselves. Until next time, thank you for your support and I ask that you take care of your mind, take care of your body, and um, please be safe.